The Ukrainian Defense Forces are already feeling the support of Western F-16 fighters at the front. This was stated by Serhii Sekotsky, an officer of the 59th Separate Motorized Infantry Brigade named after Yakov Hanziuk of Ukraine. So, answering the question of whether the military on the front lines felt the work of these aircraft, he noted, Yes, we felt it. We will not give details. According to him, F-16s are already operating at the front. I will say this. Today, the state, represented by its leadership, has learned not to prematurely say things that the enemy does not need to know. And this is very encouraging. The enemy must be constantly misled, outsmarted, not given even the slightest hints about what we have and what we will do. Let him constantly expect gifts. And this way, we will bring our victory closer. Sekotsky emphasized. At the same time, Russian mill bloggers are trying to downplay the potential consequences of using American fighters on the front line. They have actively begun discussing how the occupiers will destroy these aircraft. This position contradicts official speakers who tried to present the F-16 as a red line, the crossing of which could force the Russian Federation to escalate in response. Russian propaganda has suggested that the F-16s will be easily destroyed by R-37 missiles, which have a claimed range of 200 to 300 kilometers. However, the real engagement range depends on detection capabilities and missile guidance. The AIM-120D missile, the primary air-to-air -air weapon for the F-16, has a range of 180 kilometers, which might seem shorter but the effective range for both aircraft and missiles often turns out to be closer due to real-world conditions. Russian MiG-31 BMs, long-range strikes, such as those achieved with R-37 missiles, were supported by A-50 AWACS aircraft. Since A-50s are not currently operating in the combat zone, F-16s will have more equal opportunities against Russian aircraft, especially in the absence of this support. Peace in the Middle East will only be achieved through a major conflict involving regional power brokers, former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev has suggested. Writing on his Telegram channel, Medvedev, who now serves as Deputy Chairman of Russia's Security Council, weighed in on the escalating tensions between Israel and Iran, as well as their partners and allies in the region and beyond. The knot is tightening in the Middle East. Sorry for the innocent lives lost. They are but hostages of a disgusting state. The USA, Medvedev stated, adding, It's clear to everyone that a full-scale war is the only way to a shaky peace in the region. His comments come in the wake of the assassination of Hamas political leader Ismail Haniyeh in a rocket strike in the Iranian capital Tehran on Wednesday. Hamas accused Israel of orchestrating the attack and warned it would pay the price for the heinous crime. Israel has neither denied nor confirmed involvement, but Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu boasted that his country had delivered crushing blows to Hamas, the Houthis and Hezbollah, militant Islamic groups with close ties to Iran operating in Gaza, Yemen and Lebanon, respectively. Meanwhile, Iran also blamed Israel, adding that the US, Israel's main ally, shared responsibility for what it called a heinous act of terrorism. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, however, insisted that Washington was not aware of or involved in the assassination of Haniyeh. The killing of a senior Hamas official came after Israel confirmed that it had carried out a strike on Beirut, Lebanon, that killed Hezbollah commander Fouad Shukur. West Jerusalem has insisted he was behind the strike on a soccer field in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights that killed 12 minors. Israel and Hezbollah have been on the verge of open conflict and have exchanged cross-border attacks since Hamas launched its October 7 surprise attack on the Jewish state. The Israeli-Hamas war, which has brought unprecedented destruction to Gaza, has raised tensions throughout the region.